Yep, you saw that right. EA tried to bury this pack right here. Katy Perry's diabe- <clears throat> I mean, sweet treats. You're either shocked this exists, or you remember it very clearly when it came out and probably thought, Katy Perry? Candy? Why? Also, $30 for this? I have so many questions. Well, today you've come to the right place because I'm about to answer them. Hello everyone and welcome to The Sims Lore. Today we'll be taking a look at the atrocity that is the Katy Perry stuff pack, the history behind celebrities in video games, and their collaboration in The Sims franchise. Make sure to get your snacks ready, let me know what you're having in that snack report, and don't forget to subscribe and like this if you enjoyed it. Alright, let's get straight into the video. Everybody trying to get a piece of the pie. EA has done a lot of things within The Sims franchise over the years to make fans and onlookers alike scratch their heads wondering what's going on. But I think this is worth looking at considering EA, in regards to The Sims franchise, were notorious for using celebrities and public figures to promote The Sims games. First, a little background on how celebrity endorsements started. And it definitely didn't begin with Katy Perry's sweet treats. To pinpoint it exactly to the very first video game would prove very difficult, but from my research, I can take you on a little history journey back to the 1700s when the first celebrity endorsement was recorded. Of course, the celebrities back then were actual royalty. This article here explains a bit of the history behind it. The first celebrity endorsement dates back to the 1760s when the term brand had not even been coined and royal endorsements was used as celebrity branding. The first product endorsed was Wedgwood of UK, producers of high quality pottery and chinaware. Something tells me it wasn't as much of a sleazy cash grab, but I'm sure it has its downsides. This article right here goes into a bit more detail explaining how the owner of Wedgwood, Josiah Wedgwood, was a multi-millionaire in today's currency by the end of his life, and he used trendsetters of that era, such as royalty, architects, and painters, to endorse his products. He understood the importance of creating a tea set for Queen Charlotte and then naming himself the Potter of Her Majesty to gain a loyal and long-term customer base and charge more than the pottery was worth. I mean, if the Queen had a set, then it must have been good. This tactic of celebrity endorsement was and is a sure way to increase sales. However, it's changed slightly since the 1700s. Celebrity endorsements have been used for products for centuries, whether it's for pottery and chinaware featuring royalty, or promotion for the release of the Xbox One featuring Aaron Paul. Yes, science! Just like fine china or pottery, <laughs> video games became a product that can be sold. With the rise of the commercial video game industry in the 70s, similar marketing strategies were adopted from other products that were being sold, including the celebrity endorsement tactic. Now, you might say, why would you need the marketing? Especially for such a huge game like The Sims. Well, The Sims didn't start off as popular. Marketing strategies had to be adopted and implemented with the very first game. And sure, at the time of the release in 2000, The Sims was one of the first live simulations of its kind. So while it was being advertised, it had virtually no competition. There were predecessors to The Sims, like Little Computer People, for example, which was released in 1985 on the Commodore 64. Will Wright himself has said to have played it and even got significant feedback from the game's creator, Rich Gold. However, The Sims was the first of its kind, so for example, the main difference is that you had almost no control over your little computer person and they were aware of your existence, so you could play poker together. But in The Sims, you kind of play God, so your characters are not aware of you and they can only interact with each other. Well, except when they begin staring up at you to freak you out. Thanks a lot, Will. The Sims was marketed with television advertisements, which at the time were the way to go in reaching all types of audiences. I'm sure some of you remember them, and if you don't, they're definitely worth a watch. They were so raunchy. However, nowadays, everyone is online, so no wonder companies spent over $600 billion in 2022 alone, and all of it on digital advertising. 
At the end of the day, when it comes down to money, stats and numbers, directors and people in charge of large corporations would do pretty much anything to make more. Cue the celebrity endorsements. There is a reason Wedgwood was named the father of modern marketing, and it wasn't because of one-of-a-kind pottery. When celebrities were brought in to market video games, athletes, martial artists and game show hosts were made into characters, like Bruce Lee for example with the very popular 1984 game titled Bruce Lee released for the Atari 8-bit family. Or Mike Tyson, who got a deal after the release of the gold version of Punch-Out! on the NES, when former president of Nintendo saw him at a live match and struck a three-year deal to use his name and likeness in a game of his very own, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out! And of course, who could forget the very first celebrity endorsement for The Sims? Show host Drew Carey, who used to show up at your house party in The Sims' house party once you got everything right. Placing celebrities' characters in video games proved to be very lucrative for both parties. As a cross-promotion, The Drew Carey Show had two sketches in two separate episodes. One where the characters were parodying Simlish and had speech and thought bubbles. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> it's all blah. And the other where they used The Sims to film. Try cleaning, Mr. Wick. What? Yeah, they gave it to you two days ago. Max has then made Drew Carey into an NPC in the House Party expansion pack. The first time The Sims collaborated with celebrities was with the release of The Sims Superstar, which brought along many NPCs that were modelled from real-life celebrities. Christina Aguilera, Marilyn Monroe, Andy Warhol, Avril Lavigne, Richie Sambora and John Bon Jovi all made an appearance within the pack, as NPC celebrities who would hang around Studio Town and hand out autographs. Singer Sarah McLachlan and actor Freddie Prince Jr. were only available to download from The Sims' official website. Huh, I wonder if somehow their deal fell through or maybe they were added too late into the release of the game. Who knows, kinda weird. Also, funnily enough, they included the fictional character of Elle Woods from the film Legally Blonde, played by Reese Witherspoon, but she was only available with a limited pre-order of the game on Amazon. Of course, we all know of the collaboration The Sims had with the Black Eyed Peas, which I mentioned in my last video, the bizarre case of The Sims music in popular TV and media. We looked at how EA Tracks developed a contract with the Black Eyed Peas, who had just recently shot to fame back in 2004, after their album Elefunk was released and they recruited Fergie. This meant that the Black Eyed Peas re-recorded the majority of their album in Simlish for the game's soundtrack, including Let's Get It Started and Shut Up. After this, EA contracted a lot of other artists to re-record their songs in Simlish for marketing purposes on their social media channels and for the songs to be added to the game in the form of music on the radio. You can actually still check out The Sims music videos performed by artists such as Lily Allen, Katy Perry, Natasha Benningfield and way, way, way more. They are honestly the best thing to ever happen to me and I'm not ashamed to say it. So let's finally take a look at Katy Perry and how she comes into the biggest celebrity endorsement The Sims has ever seen. Sure, they had plenty of artists they worked with in the past, so what's the big deal with her in particular? Well, Katie got deals the others simply didn't. And that is her very own Sims 3 stuff pack. Even though it was never marketed as a stuff pack, it just says the Sims 3 Katy Perry sweet treats. Anyway, let's first introduce Katie properly. Catherine Elizabeth Hudson, better known by her stage name Katy Perry, is a singer and songwriter from California. She had a rough upbringing, which she describes as strict and religious. She began training vocally and singing in church from the age of 9, and when she turned 15, she completed her GEDs and left high school to pursue a music career. Katy had some ups and downs at the very beginning of her career and some minor successes before she had her breakthrough. After Columbia Records dropped Katie, she was subsequently signed to Capitol Records and released I Kissed a Girl in April of 2008. And honestly, the rest is history, as we all know Katie came out with You're So Gay, Hot and Cold, and a few years later her Teenage Dream album, which quickly shot to fame, selling millions of copies worldwide. 
Between 2010 and 2012, Katie was in her prime years. I mean, she was huge. She was a judge on American Idol, releasing songs featuring Snoop Dogg and Kanye West, and topping Billboard charts whilst also going on her second tour called California Dreams. And she also released two fragrances, Meow and Purr. So of course EA would jump on someone like Katie because they desperately needed somebody to plaster their face all over The Sims 3 Showtime expansion pack. You can't really have a Showtime pack without a performer to endorse the game, so they obviously noticed Katie as she shot to fame, striking a deal for The Sims 3 Showtime and creating Katy Perry's collector edition pack thing. I don't it came with a poster or something, you got like a few extra items, outfits, props, and hairstyles in her California Girls theme. Think candy, popsicles, cotton candy, and all things sweet. The Sims 3 Showtime expansion pack was released in 2012, and it offered players an array of different gameplay, objects, and careers. The pack focused on live performance, where your sim could choose to become a singer, acrobat, or magician, and perform to an audience in several venues around the new town, Starlight Shores. And here we finally are, folks, the moment you've been all waiting for. The Sims 3 Insulin Resistant Pack. The same year in 2012, The Sims 3 Sweet Treats collection was released, making Katy Perry the only celebrity to ever have their very own stuff back in The Sims. <sighs> I, you know, it's just so hard to understand how and why and how. <laughs> it's interesting because they already offered a few Katy Perry sweet treats sort of objects in Showtime with the collector's edition, but for some reason they thought it would be a good idea to release an entire stuff pack. Surely the collector's edition sold pretty well and then they thought, hey, let's bring her back in and you know, plaster her all over this other stuff pack and make more money. Anyway, the pack featured Katy Perry-like clothing, furniture, and objects, again reminiscent of her California Girls album, specifically as seen in her music video California Girls and her tour. Like this article here mentions, however, the pack raised concerns with fans for being more expensive than regular stuff packs, but it did include a lot for a stuff pack. 33 clothing pieces, 55 objects, 3 venues, and even an exclusive poster if you bought it through Origin. The pack's reception was mixed, to say the least. Players were not only expressing concern over the price, but also the relevance of the stuff pack within the franchise. Of course, now everyone has bigger fish to fry. Like if you go back to watch the Sweet Treats trailer, you see comments about Journey to Batu and how people would rather have the Katy Perry stuff pack. Yes, folks, it's that bad. In July of 2013, only one year after the release of the stuff pack, EA's community manager announced it had been retired and was no longer available for purchase as they stopped producing physical and digital copies. What? <laughs> oh my god, they literally tried to bury the thing. They killed it with fire. <laughs> wow, it really must have been a huge hit. I mean, guys, it was a candy-themed pack, and it didn't even have any clothes for kids. A candy-themed pack. No clothes for kids. None. <laughs> Who signed off on this? How did they even get away with it? I guess money truly is everything. What a bizarre contract they entered into. Hey, Katie, super opportunity. Just uh, be on the cover of this new Sims pack. Yeah, okay, cool. I charge a billion dollars. Oh, uh, okay, well, yeah, all right, let's milk this and make another stuff pack. You, you like candy, right? Yeah, your music video here has loads of candy in it. Okay, cool, yeah, candy, perfect, sold. This pack was heavily influenced by Katie's style and especially her California Girls aesthetic. But can you imagine if they did a pack influenced by her and Kanye's song E.T.? I mean, that's already way better. I'm picturing some cool Bella Goth lore right there. Honestly, missed opportunity, eh? Missed opportunity. I think the marketing strategy worked for a lot of different products and services throughout the years. However, I do believe this one was an absolute miss. Unless you enjoyed it, in which case, that's great. I think a lot of people are in two minds about it at present. 
I mean, people now are heavily comparing the stuff pack with Journey to Batu for The Sims 4 or the other atrocious content we've gotten for The Sims 4. But if you were to teleport back in time, much like Don Lothario, you would see the absolute uproar the stuff pack created when it first came out. And I mean, okay, if you were or are a huge fan, it must have been the best day ever when they announced it. But if you really hated the whole thing, much like LGR for example, who described it as a greedy cash grab resulting from strange contract terms, then you must have skipped buying this one. People were definitely not happy. Otherwise, they wouldn't have scrapped the whole thing and buried it a year later. <laughs> Alright guys, there you have it, the stuff Pack EA tried to bury after someone signed off on it thinking it was a good idea. I would like to thank my social channel members Jiggly and Chrissy Pine. Thank you both for your support. I would also like to thank my patrons Whitney Marion, Papa Khan, Negative Dana, LeMay, ML, Alia Deshayas, Perlog Anwil, Kitajan the Arcane Archer, Nicole Dante, Artsy Flashback, Nathan Lim, Sabrina, Adela Stead, Alice Wilde, and Miss Shea. Thank you all so much for supporting my channel. That's it for today's video, thank you all so much for watching, please like the video if you enjoyed it and let me know your theories in the comments below. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram for more lore and updates. I'll see you in my next video, bye!